Okay, now that we know how to take our mesh and put it into ZBrush and get some sculpted detail on there, the next thing we're going to take a look at is how do we get this work outside of ZBrush. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing is pushing it to an external program like XNormal or Substance Painter. This is where you're going to be able to bake your maps from this high res mesh down to a lower game res mesh. Um, one of the things is this polygon count for this. If we go to the subtool area, if you hover your cursor over this, you can actually see how many uh, polygons this thing has. And so that you can see that the polygon count is um, like 2.8 million for this bottom part of the crate. And if we hover this over here for this, then this is about uh, 300, a little over 300,000 for that. So that's not anything too crazy that you couldn't push over to these other programs, but it would make sense if you could have this exact s shape and then reduce the amount of polys. Um, it just helps with performance and memory and things like that. So ZBrush has got this way of taking a model and analyzing it and reducing down the amount of polygons that it has. It's called decimation. Uh, and if you go to the plugins area, if you go here and we take this and we click and we dock this over here in this area, what we can do is we can say decimation master. Um, now, if we had any kind of poly paint information, some painting information on here, we haven't really talked about that too much. Uh, actually, I haven't really talked about it at all that we could take this and we could fill fill this uh, object with a color. So if we went to color and said fill object, we could actually get a color on there. And if you wanted something to be different for the uh, top of this thing, we could say color and say fill object for that. Now, if you want uh, to take into consideration the coloring aspect of things, uh, you would have to use uh, use and keep poly paint information. Uh, the only reason I bring this up is because Substance Painter and other programs can take a look at the color information that you put on there and it can generate a map that's called an ID mask and you could uh, separate materials very easily into other programs just by color picking some of these bigger colors. So if you had these uh, pieces of wood, maybe a blue versus this is red, you could have a different material on these uh, versus this inside of here or the top lid would be very easy to pick and have a different material type than the sides. Um, it is getting a little bit more advanced for that but it, it's just something to be aware of that that could be part of the uh, pipeline that the artist might encounter whenever they're using uh, the program. Now if you want to turn any of the poly paint information off and just go back to this mode of just making it kind of gray like this, we can turn off this paint information that you see within here. It's still actually on the model and you can turn it on or off, um, but that's just something else to be kind of aware of. Okay, so that's going to tell you about using and keeping poly paint information. If you want to go ahead and say pre-process current, this is going to go start the computer in a process of taking a look at the model, analyzing the model, and uh, you can see it's analyzing the mesh. It might take a little bit of time and it processes this thing. Once this is done, we can use this percentage of decimation. So if we put it on 20%, um, it'll reduce it down to 20% of whatever the original uh, polygon count was. So if it was a million polys and you put on 20%, it should be at 200,000 for that. Or you could do this K polys, which if you want to have a very specific polygon count, you could put it on K polys. So if you want it to be 200,000 uh, polys, you could put it on that. And you could see it would rearrange the amount of uh, percentage of decimation to kind of uh, match that. So let me show you what that looks like. So if we wanted um, a million poly model, we could put it on a thousand. Let me put this at a thousand like this. And we could say decimate current. The cool thing about this is if we turn on the poly frame and we take a look at this, you can see what it's doing. It's actually reducing the amount of polys on there, but it's trying to preserve the look uh, the best that it possibly can. So here's about a million polys, and if we hover our cursor over there, you can see their polys is right around a million polys for this now at that point. Um, you could potentially kick this thing out, and you could say FBX export, and you could export this out as a um, high mesh. So if we navigate to where this sits, 
So let me pull this window over here so we can take a look at it. So um, I would just call this crate bottom um, maybe high like this. And I like to put deci for decimated like this. And so then that'll export that part out. And the cool thing about this uh, Decimation Master is that we'll see after exporting this thing out if it still holds, but it's supposed to keep those options after you, you know, pre-processed it, you can go back through and change some of the options for it. So if I put this down to, let's say, 5K for polys, um, yeah, sometimes it does that. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to run this back in the undo history, uh, like to right here. And we'll have to pre-process this thing again. And then once I do that, I'm going to show you if we put this at a really low number, like 5K for the uh, polys, what that'll look like. I'll pause the video real quick while it goes through this process again. Okay, ZBrush is done uh, with the pre-processing. And we'll put this back on, we'll just do something like 6K for this. And you can see what it does to uh, reduce this thing down. And if we put this at 5, then we're going to be at 5K for this, uh, 5,000 polys. And uh, for environmental pieces, this does a really nice job of getting the polygon count down to where it needs to be and preserving some of the detail on here. Um, let's see if we can even go, you can go to 1K. And we, so we got 1,000 polys for this. And that would still be a pretty a pretty nice model. If I put on solo, we could just see actually what's going on on the inside of this. So it is possible to use this uh, as your, your in-game mesh. Um, sometimes you might want to take it into Maya and kind of clean up some stuff. Sometimes it produces some geometry that is maybe a little bit a little bit odd uh, maybe some like really small polygons that are really long and thin that can cause some issues sometimes so you might want to take like that point and move it over here and just kind of merge it so it's just some very small minor kind of work like that you can even drop it even lower so you can do like 0.25 and if we decimate it you can see how we can keep going uh, even lower with this now you might start to run into some issues as you start to drop down with really low numbers so I'll just do something like 4,000, uh, let's, let's keep it at 5 and decimate this. And uh, so with this, you could kick this out and you could say with this, with the FBX exporter, you could export this out, put it in the area that you're going to put it in. And then this one I would call create bottom instead of high, I would call this low decimated like this. And then we could do the same thing for the top part. We could go back to Decimation Master, pre-process current. And this one should run through quite a bit quicker because obviously it's a lot less polys to be working with. And uh, again, let's go, let's take a look at this percentage of decimation and decimate current. And you can see with that, it's gonna drop it down 20%. And with this, we could say, and export that out and maybe do instead of crate uh, bottom uh, we're going to call this crate top so we're starting to get our pieces out of the program like this and so i'm gonna see it's probably gonna not like this too much if i put this down to let's put like 2k and it wants to pre-process current again we could just run it again and decimate it and take a look. Uh, sometimes you have to maybe change those values to get it to kind of wake up. And I've noticed that happening sometimes. So I'll put this on 1K and then we'll export this out. And so then we've got create top low deci like this so now we've got some high res meshes and some low res meshes that we've made uh, inside of zbrush now there is something that you could do to generate some uvs within the program i'm not the biggest fan of the uvs that actually come 
out of ZBrush, but you could open up UV Master on this and you could turn off symmetry. If you have symmetry turned on, it'll try to unwrap it with symmetry. And you just click the unwrap button. And if you do this flatten, you can kind of see what would happen with the UVs and it unflattening it out. So if you put it on something like the rotate, the gizmo tool, you can actually rotate this, click and drag, kind of position it within here like this, and then put it unflattened. And now you've got UVs on that. So as we export this thing out, so we would say create uh, top, low, deci, and we can save back over the top of that, just like that. And then this version that we have here, we could do the same thing with this one. So we could go to the UV Master tool, unwrap it, take it just a little bit, and we could say flatten, and we could see the UVs. So again, I'm not... I'm not the biggest fan of some of the results. It's just a one button click that it tries to do the best that it can to unwrap it. Um, so it will generate some UVs for you. Um, I'm going to export this thing back out again. And this time we'll do the crate bottom low, Dusty, like that. And so that's going to wrap that up for this video, showing you basically how we can get the models outside of ZBrush. And we've got a low res mesh that we could actually use as a game res mesh potentially. We've put some UVs on there. They're not the best quality UVs. Um, in a later video I'm going to show you how to build better geometry inside of Maya and how to generate some UVs there. And so the goal would be to get um, a really nice low res model from Maya and you get your high res models from ZBrush and then we'll use an external program like XNormal, uh, Marmoset Engine, or Substance Painter or Designer to bake our maps with.